We try to feel this as Australians see. The overland crossing of Australia is also a spiritual journey. But the science, technology and engineering we celebrate, of course, is front of mind. And if we put that to one side for a few moments, we glimpse the enormity of the logistical challenge in bringing the team, its solar car and all its equipment here to Australia to exceed their expectations. Our pioneer sponsor, the South Australian Tourism Commission, is ably represented here today by Hitaf Rashid, the General Manager of Events in South Australia, and we acknowledge we belong to the Territory. Paul, well, we thank you and your staff for all you do. Simon Saunders and his group in Vehicle Standards and Compliance are also an essential ingredient to the event, and we thank Bill Muirhead and his team for their good humour in guiding and supporting us through the process of getting us on the road. To our commercial sponsors, Internode, Citizen, KBR, Michelin, we strive to meet your expectations too. To our civic support, especially Darwin City Council and Adelaide City Council, we thank you. The RIOs and the CSIRO give us our scientific credibility. And I must mention the team at South Australian Motorsport. Mark Warren, the Chief Executive, will be travelling with us to see how the event unfolds. To our media team, those back at Mission Control, my own team of volunteers, especially David Kitchen and Wendy Matthews, we couldn't do it without you. The Veolia World Solar Challenge is an event which defies definition. It challenges our perception of the cars we drive and the fuel which powers them. By seeking new and different ways of addressing our personal mobility, we see young people not only dreaming of a cleaner, greener future, but working hard to make that dream a... Well, we see the first car, Twenta from the Netherlands Department. six US national championships widely recognized as the best team in the United States and these guys are going to have to run to keep up and get in that support vehicle as the teams merge in at the end of the start line. Our own Australian team give them a cheer. One of our Australian teams, of course, this one from the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Sunswift, a brand new car, and they're out to show something special and we wish them well. Next up we have Tokai University from Japan, the current world champion holder of the World Solar Cup. Tokai have have the dramas of the natural disasters in their country which has put them back but they've risen to that challenge and got here to be with us this morning. The Belgian car, Unicorn, a great team, 15 students from Leuven, been working full time for more than a year on this car. This car looks different because it's got concentrator cells and it is a very interesting, innovative technology. Devices within that car attempt to track the sun and compensate for the changes in angle. Next up is Zenith from Stanford University in the US, an Ivy League University, and you have to admit this is a beautiful car. This is a brand new car, the latest 
of the many cars that Stanford have built and uh, they have great support from industry. Next up is Ashia University with, uh, I'm not sure if it's Nomura-san who's driving this morning, but uh, certainly the champion solar car in Japan has uh, done extremely well on the track at Suzuka on a number of occasions and a number of events around the world. We welcome Ashia here and we wish Nomura-san well because I know he's, he's come here, his wife's about to have a baby but he's still come to race in the World Solar Challenge. Okay, so we have a non-starter on the grid, which is interesting. So next up, I believe, the cameraman steps to one side so I can see who it is. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, Calgary. This is the Calgary car from Canada. Uh, Axiom, the third car that this group of students have built and uh, we're very pleased to have them here. They will bring a special spirit to the event and we wish them well on their trip. Nanyang University from Singapore, uh, a late entrant but nonetheless a welcome entrant. Uh, Singapore has a great uh, history of fine engineering, innovation and development and we welcome Venture Fire from University from University Nanyang University from Singapore to the event and wish them well. Now this is a great Australian car, needs a special chair. This is the Aurora car, a non-aligned team in terms of universities, a team of volunteers who have built a number of cars and been part of this event since 1987. unfortunately moved on to a better place last year and I'm sure he'd be very proud to have been here and seen the Aurora car on the start line. Another American entrant, Cal Sol from University of California, Berkeley. Another non-profit team supported by Volkswagen who are very interested in the bright young engineers from this institution. And as I said earlier, the event crosses the political divide and we have a team here from the Kazvin Islamic Azad University in uh, Iran and it's a delight to have two Iranian teams here in Australia. Eight students from electrical, mechanical and aerospace have been working on this car for 18 months and we wish them well. Next up we have Apollo from Taiwan. Uh, the Apollo team was founded in uh, the, the Apollo team was founded in 1998, and uh, uh, Professor I and his team have been here for a week or so now, preparing for this event. Good luck. from Sakai University in uh, Turkey. It's their um, second participation in the event. They came in 2009. They have some experience at the event now and they've come back better, better prepared. And uh, we're sure they're going to do extremely well and we look forward to following their progress as they travel down the track. The University of Waterloo is from Waterloo in Canada. The team is called Midnight Sun. I think they're quite close to the Arctic Circle. Um, and uh, they have a very inspiring car and have done extremely well in their engineering. The inspiration is from Night Ride, a robot car from Hitchcock's Guide to the Galaxy.
Next we have a, another brand new team to the event, team from Italy, team Undo Solare. I have to say, as first time teams, they uh, always have many, many questions and we're very pleased to answer those questions and these guys have been an absolute delight to work with in preparing for this event, so we wish them well. Another European team is coming up, the Solar Energy Races from Switzerland, from the Bula Group, uh, which is a Swiss company in process engineering. The company has an anniversary, 150 years of innovation for a better world, and the key project amongst the Bula Group was to build this solar car and come here to Australia to show Swiss engineering at its very best. It's a delightful team, it's a delightful car, and I don't think it's going to go very far right now. Just a second, mate. Next up. Next up from the land of oil, from Saudi Arabia, comes Siraj. The first solar car, another new team from the King Fired University of Petroleum and Minerals in Riyadh. And so the car is inspired from the Arabic word below. Wow. And I'm sure they'll glow down the Stuart Highway. Uni 10, where's my Malaysians? These guys are an absolute delight to work with. They Before we do that, I need to welcome you here to the 11th World Solar Challenge, the Veolia World Solar Challenge. Minister McCarthy, Minister for Transport, Andy Ford, Chairman of the South Australian Motorsport Board, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. May I start by recognising that with and today that dream comes true and we welcome all the teams from all the countries around the world who have chosen to come to Darwin and come to Australia to be part of this event and I think we should all welcome them. It is truly a great adventure and of course an adventure of dreams. And what we see here are some of the world's most efficient electric road vehicles. No doubt in years to come we'll all be driving electric cars and it matters not whether that electricity comes from uh, fuel cells, onboard batteries recharged from home,